All right, uh, in terms of the receptors, sensory receptors that are in the skin, you have tactile mechanoreceptors, or what they're called. You have Merkel discs. Um, and those are actually up in the epithelial layer, or let's call it the epidermal layer. Meister corpuscles, Ruffini endings, Pacinian corpuscles, and Krauss end bulbs are uh, generally all down in the dermal layer. And so Meister uh, Merkel discs, they are uh, they respond to touch, so the tactile receptors. Meister corpuscles also respond to touch and, and vibrations as well. Ruffini endings, um, they uh, they are like skin stretching, deformation within joints, warmth. They're present in both in what's called both glabrous skin and hairy skin. Glabrous means skin that doesn't have any hair on it, uh, say like your lips. Um, the Pacinian corpuscles, those uh, react to uh, vibration. And the Krauss end bulbs, they detect cold. cold. So I'm not going to ask you um, all of you know what what each of these things do, but uh, you should know about should know about Meissner corpuscles and Pacinian corpuscles because we see those a lot. And I'm going to show you actually uh, here in a second some actual ones here in some uh, tissue section, sections. Next slide. I just want you to know that these receptors are there and that so that's what's sending the sensory perception from your skin to your brain. So we talked about the nervous system and so how did that information get there and this is how it happens. So, so here's a corpuscle of touch, Meissner's corpuscle and the lamellated or Pacinian corpuscle down here in the dermal hypodermal junction layer and the Meissner corpuscle sticking up here in the in the uh, um, dermal papilla there okay next slide so here's the different types you have Merkel's disc it's right up here uh, these are actually modified epidermal uh, epithelial cells up here they're right on that edge Meissner corpuscle sticks up here in the dermal papilla you have the Krauss end bulb here Ruffini endings and a Pacinian corpuscle down deeper in the dermis, and it's really close, often often can be found right at the hypodermal dermal junction. Next slide. Here's another slide just showing these. So we have Merkel cell fibers showing the, the cells there, and then we have um, the Meissner corpuscle, Ruffini endings, and lamellated corpuscles. And you also have uh, point out this you also have free nerve endings up here those are often thought to be associated with like pain uh, pain sensation um, and then you notice all the axons of all the sensory neurons you know, weaving through there okay next slide so here's a, just a cartoon of the whole thing so here's your epidermis dermis and hypodermis showing the uh, Cold sensor, or cold and heat sensor receptor, Meissner corpuscle, nociceptor sensing pain, and Pacinian corpuscle, they are sensing pressure or vibration. Next slide. Here's actual, actually a Meissner corpuscle right here. That's what that is right there. So it's sticking up in that dermal papilla, and then there'll be a, there'll be a nerve fiber coming out of it going back up to the central nervous system. Next slide. And this is a picture I took out of uh, some slides we have in lab. And so right there is a Meissner corpuscle. I'll show a magnification of that, a couple magnified views here in the next slides. So you can see it sticking up into that dermal papilla region. Next slide. There it is again. And here it is again. So even closer. So there's your Meissner corpuscle sitting right there up in the dermal papilla. So this, this is slides we have in lab, and unfortunately, I would, I would love to show you these guys, you guys, these things, but we can't. And you'll notice down here, you notice all the dense, irregular connective tissue, right? So this is all dense, irregular connective tissue, and then we have all your uh, epidermal layers up here. So we have <clears throat> your stratum base sal. I'll just draw it here. That'd be base sal. This would be spinosum. This would be granulosum. This would be lucidum. And this would be corneum here. And you notice in the lucidum layer, you see it looks sort of translucent. 
all through there. It looks like looks like it's glowing in a way. So that's that's why it's called lucidum. It's sort of like making a a glowing uh, glowing layer. Okay, next slide. These are what Pacini and corpuscles look like. They look like you know you cut an onion in half. So they're all layers. And so what are the layers? Well, in the middle of this right there, that is an axon. And these layers all around it are all connective tissue. So we have fiber, what are called fibroblasts, the cells that make connective tissue. They make fibers, and they make these layers all around 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 axon. The axon is unmyelinated. Okay, remember myelin is layers of la uh, swan cell wrapped 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 around, around making layer 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 layers around around the axon, which would be about. The Schwann cell wrapped around that would be about like they that big there, or about this big, okay? So it's unmyelinated, which means it still has a Schwann cell there, but it's not like wrapped and wrapped and wrapped around it in multiple layers. It's just, it's like around it once, okay? It kind of wraps, the the Schwann cell reaches out and kind of wraps around the axon like, like that, okay? So... It's not wrapped and wrapped and wrapped around it like we showed before. So these are unmyelinated, but it does have a Schwann cell around it. But uh, it, it ends up in, in this structure here. And, and these, this connective tissue, uh, when it shakes back and forth, it, it will allow you to detect uh, vibration, high frequency vibration and pressure. So you can see how if it compressed, that would uh, it could send a signal into that axon. Next slide. So here's an actual picture, uh, more pictures of Piscean corpuscles. Um, so here's one here. You can see this right here. So this is your corneal layer. This is corneum, stratum corneum. And you see all your dermal papilla here, there, and there, and there, and there, and there. And there all sticking up there, right? So that means you have stratum basal, um, stratum uh, spinosum, stratum granulosum, and it's hard to see a stratum lucidum there. So, so there's a patinium corpuscle there. You see dermal papilla are actually labeled there, arrow pointing to one. Okay, next slide. So here you can see the Piscinian corpuscle, this whole guy right here. This is all connective tissue. It's all this connective tissue out here all the way around it. Or next slide. And so here are the fibroblasts around it and the axon. You can see right there in the middle of it. So and you can see all these little guys. Here's the nuclei of all, oops, far with that. Just drawing a few of them. All the nuclei of all the fibroblasts that are making all these layers, all the onion layers all the way around the, the axon. Okay, next slide. And you notice that this is clear in the, there's a clear zone right around it. So that would be where the Schwann cell is, is like part, is wrapped around, mostly around that axon. Next slide. Okay, here's another picture of the Piscinian corpuscle, and you got the axon right here in the middle. That's your axon. All these connective tissue layers and all these little dots. Uh, there, 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 there. Those are all nuclei fibroblasts, if you can see all those. They produce all these, all these, these fibrous layers all the way around this axon. Next slide. Okay, so we finished um, the skin, and now we're going to talk about the nail. So why are we talking about the nail? Well, it's actually part of the skin. So you guys talked about, I'm pretty sure you should have talked about, um, back in lecture about uh, alpha, um, about proteins, talking about alpha helix and beta pleated sheets. An alpha helix is a, um, is a structure that goes, so it's a protein structure that goes like that. Okay. So that's that's a real it's a very small thing, but you put enough of those together, and that that makes so you can see how that could, that kind of structure could make a hair fiber. It's long and thin, right? Beta pleated sheet structure is more like this, and you can stick them together, and so you can have multiple sheets that that uh, fit together. And you can create create that, and that could make a, a long flat structure. And so, alpha so alpha helix alpha helix that'll make hair. And a beta pleated sheet. Oops. 
beta pleated sheet that can make fingernails. So structure and function, they're often they're almost always related. So uh, so so your uh, these are both keratin structures, but you're uh, but you're making this with a beta, this beta pleated sheet kind of structure. So uh, there's various parts of the nail. There's lots of names for everything. So we're in anatomy, so <laughs> everything's got a name. So the free edge, that's number one here. There's a free edge. That's the part that's hanging off hanging off the end of your finger there. Then we have the nail body. Then we have uh, what's called the lunula. That's the moon shaped white the white part down there near near the cuticle which is also called the eponychium. So that's the base down there where you, you push back your cuticles. Um, and then, let's see. So on this side, we have the number five. That's the nail matrix down here. And then we have the nail root. So you can see that's where the nail is actually being made. And then it gets extruded up, up, up uh, onto the surface, and so it's exposed. And we're back to the eponychium, the cuticle right there. And then the lunula, then the nail body and the free edge. And then underneath, we have what's called the hyponychium, also called uh, sometimes called the quick. So if you cut your nails too far, you can cut them down to where the nail actually touches the, this underlying epidermal uh, layer, and that's uh, so you, you cut your nails back to the quick. You don't want to do that because it's kind of painful. Uh, the other things that are shown on the slide here, um, we have the epidermis, we have the dermal layer down below it, and then we have fat here, fatty layer, and this is bone. So that's the distal phalanx. Okay, that's a finger bone, so it's distal phalanx. This is the last one out there. And that'd be a sagittal section through the finger, showing all the pieces. So that's the so the hyponychium is the part that's underneath the free edge. And the eponychium is back here down next to the lunula. Okay? Alright, next slide. Fingerprint patterns. You have I'm not gonna go over this real fast. It's just arch arch loops and whirls and so you can go look up fingerprint patterns those are made uh, those uh, depend on those dermal papilla sticking up there and they they'll group together and you'll have and you'll make various patterns and um, the idea is that everyone's fingerprints are unique um, and it's probably true there's there's probably no one that has exactly the same fingerprints as someone else because it's, it's somewhat somewhat genetically determined but also um, but mostly random as the way these things produce these uh, these ridges but you can see these ridges provides various surfaces, if they, especially if the oil on them, that you uh, can grip things more easily uh, if they're wet or slippery. And But also, they also, since you have oil on fingers, you also leave fingerprints. And so you can tell what the fingerprints are by the different patterns. Okay, next slide. Uh, there's uh, one of this was from the old book. There's uh, different amounts of uh, hair and different, different structures that are found in different parts of skin. So you can identify skin in different locations. So the axillary region, uh, you have hair, and you have sebaceous glands, but you all, and you also have eccrine, the eccrine glands here, but you also have these apocrine glands down here. So, and let's see, I can't see. It always goes in back behind the sebaceous gland here, so that's where it deposits its its secretions. So there's a sebaceous gland is there. And if you have hair, you'll have spacious gland, you'll have a hair follicle and all that kind of stuff. So this is axillary region, and you have this apocrine gland that's going to secrete little apocrine secretions, little vesicles come off, and they little pieces of the cell come off, and they go up the surface, and they have protein and a little bit of liquid with them, and the bacteria break them down and make you smell. So the bacteria will create this... Uh, smelly substance that gives you body odor. So the sole of your foot, you notice that it has a very thick uh, corneal layer, thick corneum. Um, you don't have any hair, so no hair. So if you look at two cross sections of things, you can see that axillary region if you found apocrine gland and a little bit of hair or and some hair versus something that had a thick um, corneal layer um, and no hair, you say, okay, those are, those are two different regions. And then here's from the forearm, and you see a lot of hairs here, and you also see eccrine glands, sweat glands, and you have these sebaceous glands going around the hair follicle there. But what you don't see, so there's no apocrine 
glands there. So, so there's no smelly glands there. All right, next slide. So, oh, so we have a lab experiment that we would normally do, and so, um, which is a lot of fun to do, I think. And you can actually do this at home if you have any iodine or betadine solution. You can pick some up at Walgreens. Um, what you do is you paint a little bit, paint a little rectangle on your arm, and let that dry. Then, and while you're letting that dry, just don't touch touch yourself, but uh, touch your clothes with it. Just let it dry. And then mix up a little bit of cornstarch with a little bit of oil. It doesn't have to be a lot. And you take a Q-tip and you paint that after it's after the better dye is dry, paint that over it. And what you want to do also is, before you start doing this, is go out and run around a little bit so that you get a little bit sweaty. And so what happens is, you put some betadine on there and you put some starch on there. Starch is in oil. And this uh, starch and, and iodine together will react and um, iodine will stain the starch uh, a blue, black, uh, very dark color. And it may take... 10 minutes, 15 minutes for this to develop, and, make, and if you leave it on for a half an hour, it develop even, even better. Um, the starch and iodine won't really react until you sweat, so until there's water there. So the, uh, the iodine and starch reaction, is, uh, water is required for that. So that's why you use the oil, so it won't react until there's sweat. So you have so all these little sweat pores will produce, will produce a, little bit of, a little bit of water and comes out on the surface, and so everywhere you have a sweat pore, you'll get a little black dot. And so we're gonna see what that looks like. Next slide. So here's my arm. I did this in lab. Uh, this was actually last year. So and this is um, so here's the position of all the eccrine gland or, or a lot of eccrine glands on my forearm, on the inside of my forearm. So which would be the um, in the anatomical position would be the anterior uh, part of my this would be my left arm here. And if you look on the back behind here, we have these models in lab. This is a large plastic model, and it's showing this white thing here, there, and there, and, uh, and here. This is an eccrine gland, okay? And so there's the pore at the, at the surface of the skin, so it's, it's uh, spitting out a little bit of the sweat, which is water with some salts. And so wherever there's water, the, the iodine and the starch react, and you get this little black dot. So and that's what it looks like. Okay, next slide. So here's a close-up view of the eccrine gland pores on, on my skin. So you can see all those little tiny black dots on there. And that, the, that's the location of all the eccrine glands on, uh, on the surface of the skin of my forearm in that little area. So pretty cool, huh? All right, next slide. 